I'm Peter Robinson. I'm Professor of Dental Public Health at the University of Sheffield School of Clinical Dentistry. One of the things about dentistry is that dentists have to try so hard to learn the technical aspects of treatment that it's easy for them to forget the person attached to the teeth. And yet, of course, the person's crucially important. With a condition like dentine hypersensitivity, we need the patient to tell us they've got the sensitivity before we know to look for it. And then it, it's patients and people who go out and buy products, who go to the dentist and so on and so forth. The Dentine Hypersensitivity Experience Questionnaire, DHEQ for short, is a questionnaire that inquires about the effects of dentine hypersensitivity on people's everyday life. And it takes the form of a questionnaire, well there are different versions of it, uh, between 15 and 45 questions. Um, and it inquires about all of the different aspects of everyday life that might be affected by dentine hypersensitivity. DHEQ was developed so that we could evaluate the effects of products on people's quality of life. So that uh, uh, we could um, give, say, a toothpaste to somebody with dentine hypersensitivity and we could see how much their quality of life improved as a result of using the toothpaste. On the face of things, um, it seems quite easy to knock together a questionnaire to measure something like quality of life. Uh, it's actually an immensely complicated process and DHEQ used the gold standard approach to questionnaire development. So that uh, in the first instance we talked to lots of people who had dentine hypersensitivity to find out the kinds of things that bothered them, to find out the language that they used, the words and phrases they used to describe those impacts on their everyday life. And then to find out how toothpastes and mouthwashes would make the condition better. We then used that language and those ideas and built them into a very long questionnaire that we gave to lots of people with the condition to find out which were the questions that worked best. We did that first of all by just giving it to people and getting them to fill it in, but later on we started to give it to people uh, several times over time to see which were the questions that responded best to treatment. So it's quite a sophisticated process. GSK's involvement in the development of DHEQ was immensely important. They funded the work, but just as important as the funding, they had access to expert knowledge on dentine hypersensitivity and uh, they were able to give insights into how the condition would affect people's everyday life and to allow us to test the questionnaire in people whose quality of life was changing over time. We learnt a great deal about uh, dentine hypersensitivity during the development. Um, the first thing really is that in the textbooks and things, dentine hypersensitivity is just simply described as a short, sharp pain. Uh, and on the face of it, that seems a very simple thing. The thing that really surprised us was how complicated the effects of that pain would be on people's everyday life. So yes, they would have um, pain if they had a cold drink or ice cream or something like that. But then we discovered that people had quite elaborate mechanisms to cope with the condition by avoiding things, by eating on different sides of their mouth, uh, avoiding social situations where they might be presented with cold drinks and things like that, that we would never have anticipated. We also discovered that um, uh, dentine hypersensitivity had a, a whole variety of effects uh, on people's day-to-day -day functioning so that there were various things that they wouldn't do, as I've mentioned, not eating and drinking, but there would be emotional impacts that they would get frustrated and angry with themselves, and um, they'd avoid eating and drinking and things like that. DHEQ could affect clinical practice in lots of ways, some of them quite obvious uh, and some of them 
perhaps a little bit more abstract, but uh, perhaps more far-reaching and important. Most obviously, dentine hypersensitivity has been an enigma to dentists. We diagnose the condition only when we can find nothing else wrong with the teeth. So the patient has pain, we can't find anything wrong, and we say it's dentine hypersensitivity. Immediately, that is, by definition, an enigma. So that um, having a better understanding of the patient's condition um, clarifies what's going on much more. On top of that, having a measure of how much the patient is being affected means that we uh, can detect benefits of treatment, find out what's working and what isn't working. Added to that, that's giving us an entire language and a way of communicating with patients that I think that they'll really appreciate. So that we discovered in our interviews of people with dentine hypersensitivity that they became slightly frustrated that their dentists had very little to say about the condition. So um, that this, I think, will improve the patient satisfaction, which, if you're in practice, can only be a practice builder, really. Another benefit of using DHEQ in practice relates to the slight tendency that we all have as dentists to focus on the technical aspects of treatment and, and sometimes forgetting that there's a patient attached to the teeth. So that uh, um, what the questionnaire does, it legitimizes talking about things that are important to people. And again, that can only be of benefit if you're trying to build a practice and maintain good relationships with your patients. Thank you.